Welcome to the Bourbon Van. I'm Phil. I'm Julie. Won't you come join us down in the holler? It's Diggle time. We are talking Cascade Hollow Distilling. Mm. George Dickel. Ooh. Bourbon. Huh. First ever, right? Weird. They've made a big deal out of calling everything Tennessee whiskey for ages and ages and ages. All of a sudden, it's a bourbon. We don't want to be a part of any argument about what constitutes Tennessee whiskey or bourbon or anything like that. Yeah. We're going to make one quick distinction. Nicole Austin, who is the head distiller and manager over there, she said that this bourbon, the reason they called it bourbon, is because these particular barrels taste like bourbon and not Tennessee whiskey. The argument, is it Tennessee whiskey? Is it bourbon? We don't care. We don't want to hear about it. We just want to know what it tastes like. Exactly. What we have here is an eight years aged, 90 proof, George Dickel offering that sells for $33. We got it as soon as we saw it because the last couple times that we've had an opportunity to buy Dickel products, new Dickel products, we've been surprised by how good they've been. And now we get this new offering that they call bourbon. So call me intrigued. We've got this bourbon here. We're going to do the nose, the palate, the finish, and then we're going to talk a little bit about value. We're not going to talk too much about competition because there's so much out there, but we're you... just, I feel like we just need to know. Exactly. Exactly. Dickel has not let us down in the last six months. Every time we try something new, we've enjoyed it. So onto the nose here. I wouldn't call this unmistakably Dickel. There's not a bunch of Flintstone vitamin or anything else like no. that here. But there's still some dickel here. There's a little bit of that circus peanut note. That's not gone. It's actually kind of a lot happening here. So I get a little bit of orange and vanilla bean on this. I agree. It's almost like a like a fake orange flavoring, mm. but real vanilla beans. Almost yeah. like fresh sliced, like when we we're putting vanilla beans in like homebrew beer or something like that. And uh, light brown sugar. That's very pleasant. The nuttiness here, which is usually a peanut, I'm getting almonds on this one. Cheers, here we go. Let's take a sip of this and see what we find. Let's find out. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. I just watched your face do a lot of things. I need to think about this a little bit. <laughs> I'm just used to Dickel tasting a certain way. Yeah. I need to think about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, this is, we've had a I'm couple surprised. sips of this. I'm surprised. I'm a little bit surprised, I guess. What I keep coming back to is almost like that orange flavoring. Not necessarily orange or orange zest, but orange flavoring. There's a little bit of spice that goes right up my nose here. Maybe like a black pepper a little bit. The almond is very nice. There's mm -hmm. a hint of peanut as well, but there's vanilla bean and there's caramel sort of carrying it through. It's not overly complex, and at 90 proof, you wouldn't really expect it to be, right. but it's more complex than I originally expected this bottle to be when we pulled it off the shelf. It's interesting to me. It has a bit of sweetness about it, but mm -hmm. also a smoky, almost tobacco-y yeah. taste to it. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting sip. Yeah, and I, what I like and about it. And I think this... I'm distracted because I know it's a dickle. So I feel like it should be something straight and narrow. Yeah, yeah, you've got expectations. <laughs> you can pick out a lot of flavors on the nose. It's not overly complex, but you can pick out what's there. Same thing on the palate, and the same thing on the finish, which we'll get to in just a minute. You already identified one of the flavors that I find there, but it, it sort of morphs as you're going from the nose to the palate to the finish. It's complex enough that it can do that. For me, that interesting note on the finish is really tobacco, mm -hmm. um, and, and it finishes with like tobacco charred oak that bourbon richness shows up on the finish. I wonder if that's the reason that they decided that these particular barrels right. weren't Tennessee whiskey, that they tasted more like bourbon, mm. because you don't always get that nice deep char, that nice tobacco note from their typical Tennessee whiskeys, the number eight, the number 12. This is a, a pretty unique product. I will say this is- For Dickel, it's pretty unique for Dickel. Yeah. I can totally see me loving this today and hating it tomorrow. That's actually a really good point. Yeah. This is a whiskey that I keep saying, well, I say to myself when I'm sipping and I'm thinking about it, this one seems like a great summertime, daytime mm. sipper. Mm. It also seems like around mm. midwinter, Christmas time, 
lively orange notes, vanilla notes, that sort of citrus thing will play well. I would say that there are times when this bourbon, it's weird, feels weird to call it a bourbon. Yeah. There are times when I would sip this, especially if I'm in a session with other bourbons, and I would go, I don't know. I'm intrigued about this in an outdoor setting. I think it could be good around a fire. It could be good yeah. just hanging out in the backyard. This one is interesting too because the mouthfeel is quite nice. It's a little bit viscous, not overly viscous. And by the way, that finish doesn't stick around all that long. But for $33, and now we're gonna, I have to talk value a little bit on this bottle. Yeah. For $33, what you get for balance, for finish, the nose is fun, the palate is pleasant. Yeah. The finish isn't all that lasting, but it's still interesting. It's, it's different than the rest of the sip. I think that there's something going on here. So much vanilla in this sip, it's throwing me a bit <laughs> that it doesn't taste like our normal dickles from the past. I'm a hit or miss kind of dickle drinker. Sure. The last couple. I I've, think most people are. Yeah, and the last couple I've really, really enjoyed. Today, for me, I don't like it. Yeah, I think that if I may be so bold, I think this bottle is all oh, right. Man. Yeah, an eight year age statement on a $33 bourbon that has this flavor profile, not too bad. You know what I'm really interested in? What's that? We've got a lot of Dickel friends. Dickel friends. Uh, Dickel fan friends, fan Dickel friends. I don't know how to say that. Uh, I think there's a wrong way to say it. I want to know what they think. <laughs> and I'm keeping in perspective on this one that it's Dickel. Yeah. And it shouldn't really taste like this. This will be an interesting bottle to blind against some other 90 proof whiskeys hmm. because I don't know that there's not enough dickleness to it yeah. that you would know that it's a dickle if you blinded this with a bunch of other 90 proof whiskeys. I actually have a silly grin on my face right now because I thought there's no way this is gonna be good. You, you're, and I'm... You're not super pro dickle the way that I am. I, yeah. I, I can't help myself. The last few things that we've gotten from them have been so good. Yeah. The new products that have come out have been so good. Yeah. And they're not for everybody. Not every Dickel product's for everybody. The Flintstone vitamin note, the minerality. Right. That stuff doesn't appeal to everybody. But this one doesn't have a lot of that. This is a bottle that I think is going to surprise some people. I'm surprised. <laughs> it's going to surprise that people. <laughs> so real quick, comparable bottles. There's tons of stuff that's 90 to 93 proof oh, on yeah. the shelf. All of the flagship bottles. Evan Williams 1783 to... Buffalo Trace to 1792 Small Batch to all those MGP products like um, Redwood Empire or Bell Mead, the 90 proof offering. There are so many bottles in this, yeah, on that shelf. It's getting busy there. It's honestly, there's a lot of personal preference that goes into that shelf, but this feels to me like it belongs. I don't want to go into more comparable bottles because I don't want to compare it to anything. I do want to blind it against some things because I think it, could surprise us. And I think that if you're a Dickel fan, what do you think? If you're not a Dickel fan, it's almost worth a shot. It's just, it surprised me. I will say it surprised me. Yeah. Well, we want to hear from you. What do you think of this bottle? Has this bottle come to your neighborhood yet? Are you buying it? Mm -hmm. Have you bought it? What do you think of it? And uh, honestly, what notes are you getting on it? We're getting, I'm sitting here with so much orange. The orange is hanging around. I know, orange caramels, vanillas, a little tobacco. Kind of a lot to like there. There's there's a lot going on. Well, have you had this bottle? Do you love it? Do you hate it? What tasty notes are you getting? Tell us all about it. Check us out on Instagram. Join us on Patreon. And from wherever we are. To wherever you are. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. New part of Dickleness. Mm. Ooh. Ooh.